this journey, it wasn't easy. All right, they're waiting for us outside. There's security. The road to actually sit down with Newegg executives and discuss the issues was difficult. And we felt like Newegg was playing games with us up until the last possible second. So you can film, ignore my email and hopefully okay. that won't be public. Uh, you can film all you want outside. This is Terry Cox and you can film Hi, in our conference room. So you can film all you want outside and then no filming except for our conference room. So okay. no filming as you walk in. Okay. Is that cool? We'll, we'll keep it pointed at the floor while we walk in. Okay. No filming. I want a record of everything for, okay. for your okay. guys' sake okay. too. I'll explain why. After our first video of its questionable RMA practices, Newegg invited a conversation via phone. And when we took Newegg up on it by alerting it in advance of showing up at its headquarters that we would like to talk, the company agreed to the meeting and knew our plan was to film it fully transparently for our audience. We landed in California with the meeting on the calendar, having flown across the country, and we shot the next video praising Newegg and saying that we looked forward to the meeting because we wanted to help Newegg to provide some competition in the market, not just go in there and flame it for an obvious mistake that we had already talked about a lot. But after filming our previous video and before publishing it, we received another email from Newegg with a very different tone. It told us now that filming and audio would not be allowed on its property. There are weasel words here we could have employed, like, okay, we can go across the street. But this looked as if Newegg was trying to test us at the last minute, or if we give them the benefit of the doubt, it was acting in fear. We genuinely wanted to have a real conversation with Newegg to try and give the company a chance to answer for itself and improve itself. This epic journey was brought to you by us and the GN store at store.cameraxis.net. Our fierce independence is made possible by your purchases of our fully custom, high quality products like our HUD black and red desk sized mouse mats. These mouse mats have custom vibrant red anti-fray stitching at the borders, red rubber underside, and high resolution print. Also check out our 3D component drink coasters with exceptionally unique details and high quality rubbers. Support your drinks while showing off this awesome hobby. Our large PC building mod mats are back in stock now and shipping as well, and they're the market leader in rugged work surfaces for computer and teardown projects for extreme heat resistance, durability, and utility with things like ethernet wiring diagrams, cable pinouts, and screw tracking grids. Our toolkits are also in stock and shipping now, useful for GPU teardowns or PC building. You can visit store.gamersaccess.net to help us fund our future projects like this one and our test equipment while getting something quality in return. Our sincerest thanks to everyone who has supported us in any way. For those of you who have Micro Center or some other alternative to New Egg and Amazon, that's great. But a lot of people, including us, really don't. And we don't want Amazon to just become a monopoly. And that's why after going back and forth on whether we should even publish that previous video, we ultimately decided to publish it and hold Newegg to its promise since that's what we filmed the video under the premise of, even though the promise had changed. Now, after publishing that video, presumably because we expressed general positivity and uh, excitement to engage with Newegg and potentially see an improvement, and probably also because of the community response in the comments that was positive towards the acceptance of the upcoming meeting, Newegg, without telling us, went back on its going back on its promise and decided it would meet with us after all on camera with audio. So to recap how we got here before we proceed, Newegg invited a phone conversation. We took it further and we notified them that we'd be flying out instead with cameras. Newegg accepted the meeting. They then notified us no cameras would be allowed even though they already agreed to it. They then went back on the going back of that and reneged the reneg which is maybe appropriate given the stock symbol of Newegg. So important stuff as we get into this. As always, there'll be chapters in the description if you want to jump around. But the biggest thing, the reason this video is long, yes, we know, but it's not long-winded, is because we didn't want to make any cuts to the interview. So going into this, we wanted to make sure everything was represented as it happened in real life, so neither party questions the outcome of the video. Newegg has nothing to ask about. Why did you cut XYZ? The audience doesn't have anything to ask about, and we make sure everyone was represented fully, transparently. That was our objective. That's why it was so important for us to bring the camera to the meeting, because if it's just a closed doors meeting, that doesn't really achieve the goal of bringing transparency to the issue of Newegg's return and customer service processes. So in spite of how truly bad Newegg made itself look in the run up to all this, we still wanted to be fair to them. We gave Newegg the benefit of the doubt that maybe the company's panicking and acting in fear. And so we sort of brushed that aside and decided to still go through with the meeting 
be direct, be fair, and not just flame it for something that we've already published multiple times now. Because our goal is giving Newegg a chance to improve itself. It's really not fair to just attack without giving an opportunity to improve because then there's never any incentive for the subjects, the unit that screwed up, to improve. This is maybe just a microcosm for the world in general. So we wanted to extend that opportunity to Newegg because it would just be better for all of you all, our viewers and their customers, if it can improve itself and do things the right way. So we are including everything, plus our own wrap up at the end. That means you can watch the entire interview start to finish and make your own decision on what you think of Newegg's statements and if it is improving or if it's making the changes that you want it to make. Additionally, we will have our own recap at the end, so you can jump to that one as well, or you can jump around to the chapters for the key topics in the interview if you want to see what we think about the whole issue. When we opened the email account, egg at gamersnexus.net, asking for well-documented evidence of your own issues, getting money back from Newegg for selling you defective products or wrong products, we received hundreds of emails in just 36 hours, and we never even announced it in a video. That was just with Twitter and YouTube community posts, which are far lower reach. So that tells you something about the scope of the problem, and that's why we're focused on the wider issue for everybody in the community, not just on our problem. We didn't want to give Newegg the opportunity to say it's a one-off, because it's clearly not. But we do want to afford Newegg the opportunity to make things right and to make sure this doesn't happen again. There have already been some policy changes coming out of this interview. We tweeted about those recently. We'll talk about them at the end of this video as well. But for now, let's get started. Here's the uncut interview with Newegg's four high-ranking employees. Okay, just a quick... Anyway, I guess since there's four of you guys, if you don't mind just going around introducing just so everyone knows. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, hey Steve, again, I'm Terry Cox. I'm the Vice President of Customer Service here at Newegg, uh, in charge of all customer service operations. Um, been with the company about six months, and one of the uh, tasks I'm charged with doing is identifying issues like yours, uncovering them, digging down, and seeing what we can do to provide a more positive experience to the customer. And with that, I'll hand it off Great. to Don. Uh, Don Guzdak, Vice President of Operations. Um, I have both the transportation department as well as the fulfillment group. Um, the return center and logistics falls under the fulfillment group. Um, been with Newegg for three years. My name is Eric Wine. I'm Director of Public Relations. I've been with the company for one month. Um, <laughs> but I have two decades of experience in video game PR, tech PR. Um, just to be upfront, we're going to be 100% honest, answer every question you have. There are some questions we can't answer as a public company. Uh, if we don't know the answer, we're going to tell you if we don't know the answer. But I built a 25 year career on not lying. We will not be lying. <laughs> so, okay. Pass it off to Vince. Cool. Nice to meet you guys. Um, I'm Vince Aguilar. I am the Director of Platform Experience. Um, I just started this role recently. Um, in this role, uh, I work with business leaders across the organization to uh, focus on projects and different initiatives to improve our shopping experiences across our platforms, such as our Newegg.com website, Newegg Business, ABS, and so forth. Um, I've been with the organization for 19 years, going um, this June. Um, the first 18 and a half years, uh, I was dedicated to customer service. And so I've kind of spent my entire career at Newegg here in customer service, and now I get to serve um, our business just with other um, project-related, you know, uh, initiatives to help improve our platforms. Cool. Yeah. Um, so the let's see the first question. See, the thought we had is just addressing your videos. Okay. Yeah. Just because that'll probably answer all your questions. Is if we took you through what happened, because what you ha what happened is, is bad. And we want to talk to you through all those steps and what went on, because we've investigated it. It's we we're not we have nothing to defend. It was er, a lot of errors were made, and we want to explain to you what happened, and that might help you understand. And I'm I'm definitely fine with that. Um, I'm my primary goal isn't to be here for my issue; it's to be here for sort of the wider issue of of similar things happening. Sure. So I'm for sure open to hearing more about what happened specifically in that case, but. Uh, but uh, we had a lot of people reach out to us in the last, we opened an email account specifically for receiving these things. And I mean, some of the, I can work with the people who've emailed us as well. And if you want to receive them directly, I can maybe forward them at some point Absolutely. for the people who are willing yeah. to do that. Um, but anyway, the, the main goal, I think from my end was to make sure uh, 
we talk about the wider issue and not okay. just the specific motherboard. Okay. Let's, if let's you want to talk about let, it, let's though, give, no, I'd like let's to start let, with that let's, sure. because I think it was really bad. And you're a customer, and we care about your customer experience. So sure. let's start that. Okay, that. Sure, sure. Eric, thanks. Yeah, for guiding that that direction. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I'd like to say is, um, since the initial tweet, that's the first time it came across my desk. Uh -huh. Thanks for letting us know. Like wholeheartedly, we. We don't do the best job at times, in your example, of getting these the first time through, obviously. Uh, we can go back to the actual RMA issue itself, and Don can speak more about that. But once it was brought to one of our team members, he blocked his name out, but we know who it is, mm -hmm. and you know, he, he didn't, didn't follow up, right? So you're contacting Newegg, he did some chats, and essentially you're being told, no, we're not going to help you. So what we're looking at doing is letting you know that that's not, you know, even one customer, not with a huge followership, but any customer that gets through and isn't taken care of the right way, it's not okay for us. So thanks for bringing it to our attention. Because of your followership, it got to my desk, right? And we absolutely want to just take a minute and say, we're sorry. We yeah, I think the, the big takeaway there too is it shouldn't have to get to your desk. Correct. Obviously. So I don't know if there's, I don't know the organization in it well enough if there's sort of a, like a... Um, a CMO type of person or whoever would kind of be at the top of the hierarchy but uh, over customer service but ultimately it seems like there should be some sort of check where uh, in the very least you, you don't start with assuming the customer's line I guess I don't know because I run a store too it's not yeah. as as high revenue as Newegg yeah we don't ship as many things but we ship a pretty good amount of stuff and our general policy is to start with uh, assuming an earnest customer mm -hmm. because it almost never goes poorly, right? It's just like worst case you give someone fraudulent a free motherboard. And I, I don't think that will be exploited too often, you know, and, uh, and you put systems in, in place to try and prevent it anyway. Yeah. 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 But Absolutely. just it, it kind of, I think, and that's the, this is actually, one quarter of the emails that I received in the last 36 hours. Um, most, we vetted these. Most of these are related to the same type of thing where it's customers sort of assumed to be lying yeah. mm. uh, or assumed to have caused the damage in the very least. Yeah. So I guess like, I appreciate that, uh, that there was care once it got to your desk, but also, Newegg has too many customers for oh, yeah. all of them to have to yeah. go to you. No, right? exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. And, and so what I would say to that is identifying them quickly. Um, and what I would like to say to your, your you know, followers and any potential customers of ours is anytime somebody doesn't get a five-star experience, they need to speak to a manager or a supervisor. You know, similarly to if I was in a restaurant and I, my server wasn't taking care of me, I'm going to ask for the manager. Mm -hmm. Now, we would prefer to change the policies to where we're not assuming and we're you know, quickly I can skip forward and say, we, we messed up. You know, it's, it's several failure points in your case, but as an example to others. And uh, any opportunity that we have to be made aware of that, even on more of like a first line of defense mm. from the customer service professional to their immediate supervisor or the corporate escalations team that you've been dealing with, we want to resolve those issues quickly and learn from this mistake and admit it. You know, we definitely have some room to improve. Right. Um, so, I mean, I guess the, the first question I really wanted to ask is maybe it's an easy one I don't know it depends I guess but fairly straightforward which is you know, Amazon I said this in the other video uh, is very well known for its return policy mm -hmm. for customer relations shipping speed ease of access <laughs> shipping price which their strategy is a whole separate topic but it's pretty amazing how they've made people expect that shipping costs zero dollars mm -hmm. and that's hard for other retailers, right? right. So uh, I guess the, the question on sort of new egg side of things is ultimately with that as the competitor, what is uh, the, the real reason or the core reason someone should buy from new egg? No, ab absolutely. And with Vince's experience, I think he can speak well to the process improvements that we've been making prior to this, uh, your pr particular issue to improve the customer experience, and that's kind of his department. Vince, would you like to tackle that question? Yeah, so thank you, that's a good question. Um, you know, we're, we've stayed firm in our commitment to deliver the best shopping experience we could 
uh, for our shoppers. You know, over the years, we've grown, we've added new products, we've offered different services, and specifically over the last two years, um, with very instrumental feedback from our customers, we've made some significant improvements and a few of those things I can speak about, um, which are in 2020, um, we've launched uh, on our website our ability for our customers to get their uh, third-party marketplace orders uh, returns online. So being able to create those returns online previously, they have to contact customer service. So we really wanted to make it an easier shopping experience. Um, within that same year, we also updated one of our return policies, which was the, we added the zero, zero dead pixel policy, mm -hmm. which that meant customers who purchased monitor and television products um, could return them 100% uh, hassle-free with as little as one dead pixel. So this was something that was a sticking point for our customers, and you know we made it an we made an effort to change that policy because we want to make sure we're giving a great shopping experience. Um, fast forward to 2021, we uh, we launched our live chatbot, so which this which this allowed our customers to get some really in, uh, immediate customer service, um, whether to track their package check their order status, request a return, report a delivery issue online 24 hours a day. And if they need to speak with a human, they have that ability to do so very quickly. Um, we also launched our ability on the website for customers to report their delivery issues on the website because prior to that, they had to contact customer service. They needed to go through some more effort. So we really focused on how to make our website a very easy shopping experience and then we also made some changes to one of our large item delivery uh, uh, policies where a if a customer received a damaged product, um, they needed to report those damages within two business days. Mm. We've updated that to match our, our normal 14 business days so we have a consistent shopping experience for those customers that buy large item deliveries. Um, and then lastly, we proudly launched our new egg. 30-day uh, hassle-free returns in 2021, which means that customers that buy products that are sold and shipped from Newegg that carry that um, hassle-free return badge can return their product with no restocking fees. We cover the return shipping for products up to 50 pounds. Um, and you know, this, these were some of the things that we just, we learned from our customers. Our customers are so important to us and we really care about their shopping experience. And you know, we're looking at how others in the field are doing it and we wanna make sure that we're competitive and we're delivering on that commitment. So it sounds like the, the policies are reasonably positioned, are in the right place, or come from the right place at least. Um, based on just the what I've read through from viewers and what we've experienced then, I don't think those policies are coming across to the customer, so maybe that's the disconnect. Yep. Yep. Where, so, so with that, you know, so, we talk so, about the procedures mm. and the standard operating procedures and the process in which we use to deliver on those commitments and to leverage those policies and that's where we saw that's where we saw the break right so so what is what is the sop for like post-purchase for dealing with the customer post-purchase once you have their money once uh and they encounter an issue and what's the step-by-step -step customer contacts new egg says i have x issue what happens internally before you answer the direct question i, I want to speak on a higher level too sure. i think the sentiment that you're feeling is that might, might be Newegg, might be other customers as well, but it's the general feeling that, ah, you're wrong. We're going to prove it to you. And it could be viewed as some sort of deflection technique or there's mm. pressures you know, coming in. That's another thing from some of your videos and, and others is where is that pressure coming from? Uh, I think it's a general underlying pressure to be efficient. You know, we, we ask our people to perform at certain levels. And what we need to do is take care that we've got oversight and that when things, we're speaking about um, whatever the number is, hundreds, thousands, ah. whatever it is, the sheer volume of, of orders and the customers that are satisfied, being careful not to minimize the impact that this has had on you and many other people out there, uh, aren't being represented. And again, I want to go back to even one customer is too many. So if we've got policies in place, and he can speak to those because he's been here for you know, the majority of his career, mm. what, what can we do to enforce them and make sure we're not applying too much pressure for efficiency and the quality is being improved? So I think that's the focus of where, where can we get our team members. And, that, and that's where I'm going to tell you, we are going to mess up. Uh, we, we have messed up. One of the... Uh, I think, yeah, and, and this, so a much more extreme example of we've messed up from a company yeah. would be, uh, I hate to just like name them out of nowhere, but uh, I'll, I'll anonymize it a little bit, but there was a fire hazard issue. There were multiple fire hazard issues, but there was a fire hazard issue we covered uh, last year. And... Um, 
that was a, a great example of cost, uh, customer runs into a very serious problem, company messed up, the company didn't resolve it properly. But then you have Fractal, for example, with the torrent case. Mm -hmm. They also had a, a potential fire hazard issue. And that's really serious. That's a lot more serious than, sorry, you got a motherboard with bent pins. Um, but uh, this is an instance where a company messed up and then they got in front of it they recalled all the items, they fixed the engineering, they sent it out to press mm -hmm. completely transparently. So I think it's fine for a company to mess up, and I, I think our viewers understand that at this point. Um, it's just about how is it dealt with, right? And, yeah, absolutely. and on, on this end, like the fact yeah. that I can get here is great, but um, this can't happen for hundreds or, or however many people, at least hundreds mm -hmm. in our audience. No, no, that's a great example. And I mean, safety is paramount to you, your health and livelihood. Right. I, I think finances, though, are, I don't want to say equally important, but they're right up there. Uh, the power of your purchase, mm -hmm. um, if the company that you're purchasing from takes it seriously. So some of these particular instances are where we need to change that view from our team members internally. You know, my team members are my customers, my internal customers. And if I'm gonna take care of them and give them that right leadership and let them know that we care about them, they can in turn share that empathy to, to the customers calling in. And so that's where one specific that we've done is we've gone back and looked at open box motherboards. It may have been a part of our press release. We've gone back and looked at open box motherboards and CPUs. And have not only already begun contacting, we've already gone through the last year a couple of them this year and maybe whoever it was. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give the numbers. I don't even know specifics. But I have been confirmed that we've already issued refunds to any CPU or motherboard bent pin rejected on the on the return side. Mm -hmm. So that's just open one small step, step yeah. for, for the open box ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's one small step that we can do to make some reparations as, similar to the recalls. But um, yeah, moving right. forward, this has helped us adjust that policy. So, so what is the SOP then for dealing with uh, a customer who claims an issue like this? Absolutely. So the, the new standard operating procedure is to contact us either through the website like you had done uh -huh. or having to pick up once they're you know, told, uh, well, they won't be told that they're rejected. So Don's team, my team, once the information comes in and it gets received, we're going to look at that and automatically approve it. There's okay. no questions asked there. Yeah. And I think, you know, just going back to what you had said, like, so we've made positive policy changes. I think your customer or your viewers, our customers can see that, right? Obviously, you had a bad experience. Um, yeah. So the policies are very competitive. I think they're getting to where we need to be with the hassle-free return and all that. Um, you know, in this particular case, other cases that have come through, you know, there's the policy and then there's the procedure that needs mm. to be followed right. in order for the policy to work. So this is where we found the breakdown, right? Um, so in our return center we have redundancies along the way to that should be preventing these and i think it is preventing the vast majority of um, issues that we have are open box or refurb items kept in the same warehouse as new items they're kept in the same warehouse but they're kept in completely separate areas okay so if you see a warehouse like literally of two hundred thousand square feet mm. um, the new items are here and we keep the open box on the other side of the building completely separate completely different conveyor line. So there's no possible way that a new item in an open box could be mistakenly picked. Okay. Uh, I have seen that happen in a few of these, like a few of the emails we've gotten. So yeah. one viewer bought, um, this was a couple of years ago, bought a 2080 Ti and ended up receiving a 680 Ti open mm -hmm. box item. Yeah. I don't recall if, if he said Newegg resolved the issue or not, but the fact that it happened, again, is yeah. points to a process issue. So in yeah. part of the process issue is, you know, or the part of, part of the process is, um, we have agents identifying, right, whether this is gonna go back in as new to stock, or if it's gonna go back in as an open box to stock, or if it's gonna go damaged and go to e-waste, so e cycle. Do agents look at every item that comes back in when it's returned from a customer? Yes. The physical inspection, like actually open the box and look at it. Right? So we have two. Yeah. So when we have, um, we have a receiving department mm -hmm. in our um, center, right? And as the, as everything's unloaded from our carriers, trailers, or trucks, we scan it, verifying that we have the return, uh -huh. um, that we've received it, right? So then what it does is it goes through our frontline agents, okay? And those frontline agents are fed the returns through 
a conveyor system. And what they do is they open the outside box, obviously, and they do a, a manual inspection of has this been opened or is it brand new? If it's brand new, there's no damage to the box, they immediately accept the RMA mm -hmm. and then they send back to new stock. If there's any exception, any exception, they don't have acts, they don't have rights to deny an RMA frontline. Mm. If there's any exception, whether they see damage, whether um, the RMA is incomplete, which you know you run a center, you know there's supposed to be three items, only two got returned. Right, right. Any exception goes to a second tier where another visual inspection um, is done. They try to figure out what the issue is, and then at that point, even the second tier in the RLC doesn't have rights to deny the RMA. So at that point, what they do is we submit a ticket, basically going to customer service. So that ticket, when we do that, we identify the reason code, missing item, wrong item, missing accessory, damaged, right? And they're doing the inspection on the spot there. They submit a ticket, and depending on the reason code, they answer a set amount of questions. You know, most of them being yes and no. Oh. Um, and then a lot of, and then there's a section at the bottom does this need any additional comments? Anything else that customer service needs to know to make a decision? And we have the ability to upload a picture if need be. So at that point, the ticket then goes to the customer service team. He has a team that is investigating the different type of exceptions. Does if, the, do the KPIs fall on the CS team ultimately for rejections? Um, they do, but what I'd like to, to add to this is that right now we're talking about a process. Uh -huh. um, it's not necessarily administrative or clerical. It does right. require a certain level of decision making to right. look a little bit deeper. Uh, has this customer spent you know, money with us? Are they a new customer? You know, what we do by that so is... So is that already part of the process, looking at the customer's history? It, it's becoming a part of okay. the process. I was going to say, that, that's, that's like, the problem. That's, that's the number thing we, one thing we do. Yeah. You know, and I've got one guy who does shipping right. and one who does customer service. Right. And well, this is the first thing we do is if, because not just of have they earned a status, yeah. but it's also, it's one of the quickest gauges of, right. you know, customers, sometimes the story just, it, it's a little weird and you yeah. get this vibe where you're like, yeah. I don't know if they're lying. Maybe this person yeah. is lying to me, but a really quick gauge of who cares if they're lying is they've spent thousands of dollars. Yeah. So. And it's not even about the yeah. amount of money yeah. is we have the ability to see how much they spent, how, if they uh, have an account with us, how long the account's been open, right. how frequently they purchase. Um, we have the ability to look at their return history to say, you know, they've returned something uh -huh. you know, once a year, we've never had an issue with them, but they've ordered 50 things and they returned right, one right. thing. Or, hey, in the last 30 days, They've ordered 100 products and they've returned 99 of them. We have the ability to see all that, and that's part of the investigation that his team and his team do when they make these decisions. Right. So, yeah, it sounds like some of the policies, what I'm hearing so far is either the policies are good intentioned and poorly executed, maybe in some cases, or some of the policies like checking customer history are coming in really late to a company that's 20 years old plus. Yeah, so that that's... That's been in place. Okay. Um, that has been in place. You know, so, I think. So you're back to poor execution. Well, yeah. And, what and we're let trying me, to let do me is, give you an example. Yeah, of we're the trying poor, to elevate that. Yeah, execution. poor execution, right? Is, and in most of these cases, that's what it is. And yours particular. Let's just go. Right. Um, yeah. There was there was uh, errors poor. that happened with it going back to open box, mm -hmm. an error. Um, now, when it came back to us, when I explained to you the, how we answer like the ten questions, right? Those are required, nine of the 10 questions are required, mm. right? All the yes and no's. That additional information that was would have been needed for yours is, hey, this had recently been sent back to a vendor. It was, it was damaged, it has this sticker on it. Like, we know, it was, right. we know. So what yeah. happened is there was no additional, in this particular case, no additional information put in question 10. Okay. There was no picture uploaded, right? So when that ticket was submitted, what it did is it went to his team, uh -huh. right? So his team looked at the, the answers, right? And to them, it was a standard case of, we sent this out, nothing was wrong with it. And it came back with bent pins, everything checked off. It was a standard case of, we're suspecting that the customer did the damage. Yes, right? yeah, I guess two improvements there then are someone on, on this secondary team 
maybe should go get the item and look at it. Yeah. Ideally, you don't have multiple employees doing the same job for a lot of reason, but reasons. But um, depending on the quantity, I mean, Newegg's statement on Twitter claims that the occurrence of these issues or the frequency of them is low and that it's a low, maybe the percentage is low, but um, as an absolute number, it starts to cause problems obviously online. Mm -hmm. But if the occurrence of incident is low, then I would think it would be justifiable to have someone in a position on, on the CS yeah. team to say, hey, maybe I should go pick this thing up yeah. because the customer is insisting X, Y, Z, right? Yeah, let me, yeah. Let me speak to that. And, and with regards to you know, marketing, public relations, and our Twitter, you know, the, the idea is that we're, we're looking at this. And I think adding that adjective of a low or small number right. paints the wrong picture. You know, I'm here today uh, and Don's here today to, to tell you, as are all of us, there's improvements that need to be made, you know, clearly. And instead of minimizing uh, the number, you know, even if it is a percentage of total volume, which might appear low depending mm -hmm. on that perspective, these are real people, right, spending their hard-earned money. And that's in, from a customer service perspective, that's what I want to focus on each and every time. Can we get somebody to go grab those? Can we elevate the execution when it's being rejected? The customers that look for that purchase and they're fine, great. The ones that return and we approve the return relatively, you know, hassle-free and quickly like we should with hopefully very few exceptions, excellent. But what about the people in a similar case um, where we're saying, no, we can't. That's where we think we can elevate the execution. So that's where our focus is right now. Right. Yeah, it, it sounds like I think what I'm hearing is at the executive or management level, executive and management teams come up with or work with other team members to come up with these policies that have all the right language in them and, and the right outlines for the start of the process and the end of it. Uh, but then once it gets down to the team's handling yeah. the details of it, the policies are being ignored. Yeah. And, so, and I can add some context here where um, we had a number of, of Newegg employees and former Newegg employees reach out to us with uh, why they thought there were some issues in the process. And um, I think the, the main thing I was seeing was uh, it's not that it's necessarily there's one employee making all the mistakes. It's that there's either too much pressure on things like KPIs where the, the pressure to meet certain targets is landing on the wrong individual. Maybe it should land higher up. Maybe, maybe instead of, hey, these people are processing too many uh, refunds or, or creating too much loss, maybe it's not their fault. Maybe it's the PM's fault or whoever's bringing the product in. They need to establish with the manufacturer of the product, hey, this thing has high DOA or OE, you know, uh, uh, return rate can we get a, a more generous policy from the manufacturer mm -hmm. to allow new egg to return it to the manufacturer instead of putting the pressure on the low level in eight fifteen to eighteen dollar an hour individual yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's just going to go this isn't worth losing my job yeah. rejected let someone else deal with it yeah so let me answer the first question there so um, so the changes that we're that we're talking about making from a procedural standpoint right um, you know Part of what, what my approach is, and it's always been with the organization I've been with, is it's always the bottom up. I've spent multiple days, you know, since this whole thing has happened, talking to the associates on the floor that have act that actually do the job and looking at the system and how they're clicking things and saying, hey, how did this really happen? Like, wh what would have prevented this? Is this just an honest mistake? Like, I can tell you that um, it is an honest mistake. It wasn't malicious. We're not scamming you. We're not scamming our other customers. Well, why would we do that, right? Um, we need you guys. Um, so, but how do we stop ourselves from making these honest mistakes, honest errors? And the, the answer is not going to come from me, um, you know, sitting in an office. It's going to come from the people that do it every day and say, see, if I just did this, it would go into new instead of damage. Right. You know what I mean? One so how the, do we separate that process? Yeah, and one of the notes we got said, um, noted that there were certain forms and procedures that the teams expected to follow that comes from management and then some of the, the lower level teams may follow their own process or forms instead sure. yeah. because they disagree with the ones from management. Yeah. And now you have a mess, right? Those have to, those have to yeah. emerge. Because right. maybe, to maybe yeah. theirs are better, maybe yours are better, but if no one's following the same process, none of it, there is no process. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah. um, I mean, if, if I were to, I like to go into meetings with an idea of, of some kind of improvement, even if I don't have any insight internally to what's going on. But it sounds like there has to be a way for the people making the, again, the policy sounds good, but there has to be a way for you guys and whoever else is on the executive team to talk with the people who are, who are back there processing everything in a way where they don't feel threatened yeah. to offer suggestions, right? Yeah. And, and, that's, and that is our process. The policy is always going to come from management, you know, the business case. We, we do obviously, it's open door policy. Um, we're not a large, we're not a huge company, right? Um, we know everybody by first name. So, um, you know, the policies are there, but the procedures really are coming from the bottom up. And who's the user? Who's the user? We make sure everybody understands the policy, and then we're going to the frontline agents, the supervisors, maybe the manager, and saying, how do we make sure that our procedures can meet this policy? Um, even when everything aligns and everything is like, hey, we're, we're perfect, there's, there's still gonna be errors. There's still gonna be errors. Someone still has a bad day. You know, someone gets distracted. Um, that's still gonna happen. And to your point and why you're here, right, is when those errors happen or when right. that, how do we address what it? What do we do? And how do we, how yeah, do we make I, right? I do think it just, again, based on my observation of the issue externally, it seems like more than John is having a bad day, so he rejected the return. Hmm. Um, I, I'm a little wary of throwing sort of one or two team members under the bus. Sure. Yeah, and when I say a bad day, I don't mean like he's maliciously doing it, be like, I had a, you know, he right. just made an error. He's not right. maliciously doing it. To, to, a, so. to a certain degree, Steve, this is an open conversation. We'd, we'd like to, and this is something I was wondering. It sounds like you might have something to add. I would genuinely, you know, I'd love to hear what, what would you, right. based on what you're hearing, you know, you're here, go ahead. I mean, you're our customer. We appreciate your yeah, feedback. I think. Tell us what you think. You know, one thing I would like to, I would really like to see is it's great that going forward, there's supposed to be better, uh, especially open box or reefer bar maze. There's issues with new items too, but uh, yeah, I'll keep it focused for now. Um, you've mentioned reaching out to some customers in the past uh, about issues similar to the ones we were talking about where, okay, maybe we're going to look at their case again. Um, I don't know. Do you have a timeline how far back you're looking for those? So far, we've gone through all of 2021. Okay. The results just came in yesterday. They were 100% effective. Everybody we reached out has replied back in a very short period of time, 100%. Do you have a quantity? How many people? Yeah, I don't know. Are we supposed to? We're not to... allowed to disclose that. Okay. I, I think there's certain with you know public filings. I'm not sure, trying to hide sure, mine sure, certain, sure. but I, I asked if I could offer that information. Was told to refrain from percentages or specifics. Okay. But what I can say is that if you are watching this, or if you know of you know an email and you haven't been contacted, you know it might not have been an open box. That's where our focus is right now. But if you feel that there's something that we should be able to do for you. The easiest way is to go to our website, you know, like anybody like you did, mm. talk to one of our team members, customer service reps, and if they're not able to assist you, and they say, oh, this has already been handled, ask for a supervisor. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a suggestion Please. there too. Yeah. So as, as a, uh, an unfortunate customer mm -hmm. of Spectrum and AT&T, yeah. uh, I've, like many other people, had the misfortune of you, you get worn down by going through the process uh, yeah. over and over. Yeah. And my suggestion, and I, I do think from, from a PR standpoint, this would look great if you do this, is to open a specific inbox or a specific line. I, I do think an email would be the easiest for everyone, but a specific inbox uh, for looking at these specific instances. So either yeah. either past issues, so you, know, you mentioned 2021, okay. Um, but uh, in case someone's fallen through the cracks, Absolutely. you, ha you have yeah. something targeted where they don't have to go through the normal chat lines. They don't have to explain to the agent six times and mm -hmm. get escalated and explain Absolutely. it. Uh, yeah, no, it would be great. And without making a, a commitment right here, I will let you know it's already been discussed. And we've got some people that are looking into the idea and seeing if we can make that happen. And if is so, there a chance we can get a commitment? We it's cannot a, because we're a public company, so we can't okay. speculate well, in the future, but we'd like your idea. What, so, okay. Yeah, so without committing, what I'd like to say is that I'm working with the team members and advocating for uh -huh. some sort of specialized open, you know, something that we can tailor-made and custom um, that can say, hey, if you're a new customer, Do you think you've you'd been be affected, able to, to 
email me a commitment before this video goes up sometime in the next few days. I'm, I'll, I'll make it a, I'll make it a priority to get the okay. answer yes or no. We'll, we'll put it on the screen if, yeah. you know, if, if we get something. But. Yeah, again, we, we, because doing that or something similar or directing them through the proper channels would basically, like you said, for PR or whatever, it would basically say that we really do have an open door policy. We, we want you to come to us. I want any customer. We feel that by delivering on a higher level of customer service, we're going to get repeat customers. If we're taking care of you, you're going to want to come back and shop with us. And so it just makes sense. Is there, is there a reason for only doing motherboards and CPUs in the, uh, the new open box and refurb policy? in terms of what's what's taken back with low hassle or, or no questions? Well, yeah, right now what we're doing is specifically with the bent pins issue or, or the CPUs or motherboards, mm -hmm. but would we expand that? We're also considering that. We're wanting to find out, as Vince was detailing, how we can make it a more comprehensive customer experience. It, it seems like to me the simplest thing is if, if you are, if you're selling open box and refurb items, you're taking an inherent risk and you can either have a cumbersome amount of processes before the product goes back out the door mm -hmm. to make sure it has everything or it's going to pass, yeah. right? Or you can make it cheaper and easier for Newegg and, and also the customer and, and just say anything open box or refurb, you have X many days. Maybe, it, maybe it's 14 instead of 30, right? Where maybe part of buying open box is there's a, there's a note that says open box, hey, our policy is a little different. We'll take it back. You have a little bit fewer days, mm -hmm. but we'll take it back. Um, I, that to me, when when it's only motherboards and only CPUs, it looks like a cop out. I think mm -hmm. to be honest, like it's great that that's there, mm -hmm. but it is sort of like why not everything else? Okay, and, okay. And I appreciate that feedback. Honestly, it yeah. just seems like it would. And ultimately, I mean, I have one really good example of a customer that I think this, this should speak to management really more than anything where this particular customer had, the short version is um, the customer opened an RMA, sent the item back uh, on the grounds of the item being the incorrect items, not what he ordered. And the RMA was getting voided or canceled for the reason of the RMA. So in other words, it came back. The team says, this isn't the right item in the box and then rejects it, except that's the reason the army was open. Exactly. So they're stuck yep. in a, mm -hmm. in a, in well, a I, I can, I can tell you. I can, let yeah, me finish go, this, go though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the big thing with this particular case, though, and some of the others we've looked at, this user did eventually get their money back, but they were in contact with Newegg for seven weeks, mm. calling and messaging almost daily. Ouch. How much does that cost Newegg exactly. to pay a customer service rep to sit there and deal with this guy yeah. every day for seven weeks? At some point, you've exceeded the value of the item. Right? Oh, no. we well, far exceeded. I, I don't know the specific cost. Right. Vince, Vince was just uh, talking to me about this. And Vince, feel free to, to chime in. Uh, I think it was the first week I had joined the organization, a similar story. You know, one of these horror stories where it was uh, item received was not what I ordered. And, you know, trying to return it, it, again, it was very similar. I had to jump on the phone. I felt it to understand the customer's perspective. Vince can take you through how we're making improvements to prevent that from happening. Um, what, what are we, how have we changed to allow the customers to, like this, to go from seven weeks to maybe a few days where it gets escalated to a team member, we're making a decision, and we're able to satisfy the customer's needs? Yeah, so um, what I can say is that, you know, the team is going to go through the process of validating what that issue is, right? And so uh, my understanding is there's, you know, they, they, we work with our warehouse teams to look at our inventory. Mm. Um, we look, we work with our PM teams, the purchasers to understand what was being advertised. Um, and sometimes we have to go steps further to go and check with the manufacturer or even our distributor, depending on what that may be. Um, and we need to take those steps to validate what that might be. And this could be a $2,500 gift card, uh, VGA card, it uh -huh. could be a high value product. Um, but in terms of the time to follow up with the customer, you know, I think we all can agree that that is beyond way too long. Um, we strive for a first contact resolution. We want our process to be well-defined and, and, and work in a way that is going to deliver the results and, and be timely with it because we value our customer's time. And certainly it doesn't make sense to drag it out this long, but um, there are processes in place to validate those. 
Um, and, and the one thing I also want to say, you know, some of the processes that we're talking about, these are processes for products sold and shipped by Newegg that are fulfilled right. through our fulfillment centers and our return logistics centers. We also right. offer that marketplace experience and yeah. the products that are sold and shipped by those sellers, they have their own yeah, returns process. Yeah, total different so. story. All of these are sold and shipped by Newegg. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, the, the marketplace, I, I don't even want to get into, but yeah. uh, I, th I think you all are, are aware of similar issues happening there. I mean, yeah. yeah, to some extent you're taking a, you're taking, as a buyer, you're taking a risk buying from someone who's effectively selling on a version of eBay, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't even, that's, that would make this go too long. So these are all sold and shipped by Newegg. So, yeah. you know, I'm, and I'm not sure, I, I think Vince, we're, we're, we're scratching at the surface, but I think we need to dig deep. So one thing that we need to do and that we're, I don't, I don't even know. Again, this is an area where I think we need to say, hey, we need to make this a higher priority with this customer. The example that I gave, it was a customer who had bought a, I don't, I'm going to make this up right now. I think it might have been like a 3070, but they got a 3090 a GPU. And he, he said it, it wasn't what he was looking for. For some other reason, he wanted to return it. And we said, no, that was the wrong item in the box. It was literally a more expensive item, which didn't make sense. Yeah, I, I, I've seen a few like that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. I got involved. We looked at it. And again, it was declined because it didn't match up. Right. And it took somebody to make a decision to realize customer history, other things that we should already be doing that we might not be. So I think maybe, answer, maybe that, that to me, if uh, when I'm dealing with any kind of management, that to me would sound like, maybe the process is um, it's either too rigid or there's a management or, or higher level reason that the people on the ground don't care. Um, and I say management or higher level because I, I don't want it to be just like, it's that guy's fault today. Mm -hmm. But uh, probably that comes from somewhere higher up. Ultimately, the company hired the person, they have the policies. Maybe the policy is too rigid where all they're looking at is name of item, name of other item, not the same, rejected, right? right. right? And, and there's no further thought because perhaps the KPIs or whatever they're judged on are too um, high pressure to where they feel like they have to push them through as fast as they can. And I, if I were in that position, if someone tells me you need to push through however many to get th to clear this queue today, I'm gonna look for the most efficient way to do that mm -hmm. that I think has pretty high accuracy. Mm -hmm. And in that scenario, it's gonna be, I look at the sheet, maybe I don't know even what the products are, right. but I see 3090, I see 3070, therefore not the same, rejected, right? Yeah. So maybe too much rigidity or too high pressure yeah. for performance, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I don't know, well, that, that would be, I'm trying to look at it too from an employee level where even though the policy comes from the top and the work is, is ground up, um, it, it, there's a reason that, that uh, teams of people will make what are perceived as mistakes. And if it's coming at this frequency, I don't think it's just one employee. I think, I think it's, again, either too much rigidity or mm -hmm. no one's on the same page. So I, I guess if, like, if I were gonna go through suggestions, you know, I'd, I'd love a commitment, it sounds like I won't get it, but on opening an email inbox specifically for dealing with i don't rule it out yet give us okay. give us well, a beat and, all right yeah. and, I, and i think we should also mention that we do have our new egg service twitter uh -huh. so that's one that our customers can absolutely right now it's active they can reach out to us um and if i'm seeing the action from our branding team our social team they're actually following up with a lot of customers who are leaving comments online um, that's something we pride ourselves on doing, which is keeping our ear to the internet and making sure that we're engaging with customers who are engaging with us online, right? Whether they're tweeting us at Newegg or they're on other various social channels, like we want to engage with those customers. We care about their feedback. We only improve based on the feedback from our customers. And, you know, this is really important to us. So, I mean, um, ultimately, when, when you guys walk away from the meeting here, what is it you think you're going to be talking about? You know, what out of all of this returns? I, returns. Okay. Yeah. And, and I don't know, you know, uh, to what extent I can provide value ultimately because I'm sure a lot of these things have been discussed. The team is large enough and experienced enough. But um, I guess what I'm getting after is if there's certain commitments that can't be made because of laws that I don't understand because yeah. they're SEC laws. That's fine. I can't really challenge that, right? I don't know. I don't know those laws, but um, I guess at least, what are, if you could, 
truncate the list to these are the key things we want to go talk to our teams about. What does that list look like? Sure. Right? I'll, I'll, yeah, let me feel this one, guys. So it's, it's ultimately, and we discussed it briefly, but to make it a little bit more concise, if a customer is going to contact customer service and we're able to give them a favorable response, right. that frontline team member should be empowered to go ahead and handle that. It's a favorable response. Customers are going to be happy. If they're less than five-star experience, and we're working that into some of our scripting, basically, then we want to escalate that to a tier two or an actual supervisor. Mm. That's our first line of defense. If you contact us, I heard the phone call originally. Right. You were a little less than satisfied, had to ask the gentleman, when can I expect a call back? You know, things right. like that are indicators that, hey, I don't know it. Let me get somebody that can help you. We don't want to let you walk out of the new egg store in the form of either a live right. chat yeah. or a phone without satisfying, you know, the if it makes sense, or at least getting somebody that's a decision maker. So um, the escalation of uh, negative issues is a key priority to us right now. Anytime we're going to have to tell a customer, no, sorry, can't, can't do this, we want somebody with more decision-making skills and empowerment, not the person being pushed by certain KPIs, mm. how many calls can you take, and whatever these KPIs may you know, be. Uh, that, that's, that's the number one. On the returns process side, Don's doing similar, and he can speak to that, basically engaging with his team, making sure that the frontline supervisors are grabbing these more often, uh, whether it's pressure or... You know, I'm not going to call anybody on our team you know, unmotivated. I don't think that's it. But there's something that we need to unlock that. So that's, that's the first one. Um, did you want to add to any of that? Yeah, or? I just, you know, from an operations side, I think the most important thing is, you know, everyone's seen your videos and everybody's, you know, a lot of our people follow yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you know, we're not, we're not a, f a company that has 500,000 employees, right? Um, we're a company that has, you know, a couple thousand, right? So when they see a video about our return center and an error that was made in our return center, you know, this error is pointed, like you said, I know you, I like that you're keeping it higher mm. because this is like an error or two errors or whatever it is. It is like very definable to like one person. And, you know, the people that we have, they're committed, they're passionate with what they do. Um, and we don't want to point it to one person. It's yeah. a process error it, that we made. Not one person made, we made, right? Yeah, so and, I, think and biggest... I mean, even that board went through three times. Yeah. So I don't know if it's the same people, you know, but... Yeah, for sure. At some point, it's like... Come on, guys. Well, right. yeah. Get it together. Yeah. No, we get it. And I think yeah. the biggest takeaway, you know, from, from, you know, this, right, especially this, is our folks want to be involved in the solution. They have the best ideas. They know exactly what they did to click this versus click uh -huh. that or... You know, this restrains them from, you know, preventing it or stopping the flow of the package on the spot. So they want to be involved. Um, you know, that's our commitment is to get them involved for sure, because they'll have the best solution for us. And we're grateful to you for exposing this error. It was, you know, a gap in our process. We endeavor to be the best technology e-commerce e company in the globe, in the world, and improve every day. And it's a complex business. And we're going to make mistakes still, but we endeavor to be the best. We want to win the, the customers back that have become disenfranchised, who have left us. You've been a customer of ours for over a decade. You spent quite a bit of money, and we should have not yeah. had this process. Three different accounts, too. I didn't okay. We won't that, but yeah. So <laughs> your videos should not have been made because we should have never made those errors. Right, but, right, right, right. And we should have probably released our statement earlier, but we're here now. We're glad to meet with you but and address it, it and make improvements. But if it does happen again, that's back to what can we do about it? How, how can we you know, speed that up, not to seven weeks, not to have to go through right. multiple contacts? And again, don't, don't rule out that we might put out a special email um, but in the meantime, you know, we still have that 800 number. If you do need to speak to a supervisor, we just encourage everybody to do that. Right. I personally know the names of all of the supervisors and their managers and customer service. Most of them have been to my house for a barbecue or tacos. <laughs> so again, we're, these are my internal customers. And if I'm going to expect them to give you and the rest of the customers good service, we're taking care of them. And we're going to find out how we can speed up these escalations process. So if another person misses it, well, hey, we got your back, you know. We're going to take care of you. Awesome. And, and just to add, Steve, you know, you asked, what are we going to do after this? You know, we're going to continue on our mission, which is based on that commitment to delivering the best shopping experience. Mm. You know, as someone who started here taking phone calls, you know, early in my career, um, I've seen this company evolve um, as being part of the customer service department, um, being part of the team who's handling these calls, working with our customers. I've had the privilege to speak with really great customers who gave us really instrumental feedback to help us identify how we can get better. Um, and that's that commitment we're gonna continue moving forward. 
um, because as Don mentioned, you know, our employees are really critical to this operation. Our customers are, and for Newegg, our customers and our employees are the most important parts of this brand. So we will continue on that commitment. Well, you know, and with growing, uh, I, I won't mention any competitors' names, Steve, but with growing pains, uh -huh. uh, customer service suffers. Even some of the top companies that are our direct competitors used to be known for stellar service and they're still building it's it's hard to chase some of these competitors mm. with how quick and easily it is to do certain things but even their customer service metrics have have dipped some of the sentiment that i've been seeing as well is oh new egg used to be well we we want them to know we want you to know that we've got people that are passionate and we're genuinely interested I, i'm sure that that's coming across but how well we execute will remain to be seen and the improvements um you know we we hope that you'll see a difference and well, sure. We're pretty sure we'll be hearing from you. In the yeah, I, I think the the sort of like on the closing side of things. The only speaking completely frankly, um, I think the big thing for your teams or or this particular you know you all to be aware of is uh, there's a lot of action that has to be done. There's a lot of talking we have done, but I I would just be wary of. I don't know. To, to be honest, yeah. the way that I think viewers will perceive a lot of this yeah. is action ex matter. Executives, high paid executives maybe, yeah. or directors or VPs um, doing what directors, VPs, and PR do, which is use a lot of really well chosen words without really concrete examples. And I'm not saying I'm dissatisfied with the answers. I think I pretty much this is what I expected. But just saying all that, that is how a lot of the talking will be perceived, yeah. even if you don't intend it to be perceived that way, but just, what, just a reality check. What right? could we do or have done to exceed those expectations so I can put that on my radar? Yeah, I, I think the big thing that people will be looking for is yeah. beyond uh, motherboards and CPUs will be looked at more extensively. I, I think there almost has to be like a concrete, really well-defined, really low word count list of here are the changes we've made uh, process-wise or otherwise. So either process internally or process externally with customer facing um, and, and not like a multi-paragraph PR statement that's mostly words. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm hearing you. And, and I understand the PR statements because I, I, that's what I receive every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I get it and I get it from your perspective. Uh, but as the person who sits between viewers and companies I interface with, mm -hmm. I know how they're going to perceive it already. Uh, and it's, I think the answers have the right words in them sometimes, a little bit long-winded, a little bit repetitious, but um, I, I haven't heard a ton of sort of concrete uh, and, and maybe that goes back to the SEC stuff. I don't know. I'm not. So the I'm only con the, the only the concrete one that you're speaking of is the the open box waiving any requirements for no no questions asked. Basically, we're going to accept the returns. That's the one concrete example that you're referring to, correct? That's sort of what I've heard so far. Is, yeah. is so motherboard, for, motherboards and CPUs. You're looking for that list of other items. Yeah. So so ideally, going beyond the specific going beyond a, a knee-jerk reaction to the motherboard that I had mm -hmm. yeah. and saying, maybe this is a, a microcosm for a much larger issue. How do we address the larger issue and not just Steve, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So, I, think, well, I think that's yeah. great feedback. That's I, good I really feedback, do. and we appreciate and that. That's yeah. definitely gonna be a takeaway. And, and um, to be clear, like, for us. I'm very grateful you all have spent the time and have sat down and explained things. Uh, I, I, I have a little bit different perspective, I think, than a lot of the audience on what to expect going into these things. Mm -hmm. So I would say this basically meets expectations. Um, I, I understand that after the camera stops rolling, maybe not immediately, but you all and whoever else at Newegg is in management will start talking about this issue and hopefully it, it won't just be talk, you know, and that there will be change. What I, where I think the disconnect is once this camera turns off, that's the end of what the viewers understand for the most part of this interaction other than viewers who are in similar positions, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And so there will have to be a follow-up really to, to short, sort of show, hey, they did actually make change. Yeah. Well, yeah. possibly right. before the video posts, whenever that might be, we, we can get back to that one, which is opening up a special line right. of communication with us directly. So even that, you know, again, every customer, every time matters to me personally, and I believe we're able to execute that down to the, the team members level so that we can engage with our customers 
and we'll have a specialized group that's handling this. And then one at a time, these customers could follow up and let the rest of the people know that, hey, we are taking care of business. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely stay in touch if you yeah. all don't mind. Um, I, we will be doing follow-ups, obviously. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe in a couple months or something, if you feel there's been an improvement, we could do another visit or something, maybe walk through the RMA line. I don't know. Um, but uh, definitely as as there are hard changes where you're updating policy or maybe you can speak a little bit to, hey, internally we've changed X, Y, Z. Like we can't give you specifics, but here's the idea, right? Email that to me if you can. Sure, um, absolutely. Because I do want to do follow-ups, and mm -hmm. even if it's just a short thing in a news video where mm -hmm. I know these things take time with massive companies, uh, and if in two weeks maybe you have the beginnings of some kind of change, please send it to me yeah, yeah, so definitely. I can report on it. Yeah, and, and Stephanie, for general customer service issues, uh -huh. reports directly to me as well. She has a manager, but both of them report right into me. So you've got a direct line of contact, right. and we can I, exchange I'd actually rather things. you communicate with me if possible, because okay. we all round up these folks, other folks, I mean, that's, I hustle around the building getting answers for sure. sure, sure. Well, so absolutely. But yeah, we would welcome another visit. We hope that we hear from customers and your audience how we've improved. And we both hear about it, you hear about it. And ideally, we have another meeting in the future where we can go through those. Right. And, and for now, um, for everybody in the audience who's in this binder and, and the other three quarters I didn't print because the hotel got mad at me. Um, uh, it sounds like for now, the answer is if you're in this group of people who's had sort of an RMA issue or whatever, return issue, try again. Is that accurate? No, and we would, I mean, if you can leave that information with us so we can reach out to these customers, we would want that. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. I, I can't leave this because there's some who requested not to be listed. Correct, correct. Yeah. Them to us. I'll, I'll take care for of the I'll, ones, we would want to be. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll filter for people who are okay with it. Sure. And then but we'll yes, that is accurate. And if you'd like to leave us anything, if possible, great. But yes, we'd have that open invitation. If there's something that's unresolved, please don't hesitate to give us a, give us a call. Sure. And if you're not met with that immediate satisfaction level, get that supervisor on the phone. Okay. Great. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Okay. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Now, as for how things went, ultimately, uh, we have a lot of thoughts on this, both good and bad for the outcome of the interview, the meeting, and how things went. First of all, primer, this was the most nervous I've ever been going into an interview. And given the tension, which was uh, palpable in the room. I suspect that the executives were also fairly nervous, or at least most of them were. So there's a few reasons for this. Uh, on my end, I was taking the issue extremely seriously, and I take my job extremely seriously, and I wanted to make sure that going into it, I was not uh, unfairly harsh towards Newegg, but also not too soft. I didn't want to let Newegg just get away with spewing PR statements for however long the interview was, and then close in, and we really kind of have no answers. So there was a lot of pressure I felt uh, to perform well for the audience, for our viewers, and to do overall a service for everyone. On Newegg's side, obviously, uh, they're answering for something that was an extreme error, uh, was questionable on sort of the, the nature or the intent of that error. And also, to be fair, I have a lot of camera experience, and none of those executives, as far as I could tell, do. So that plays into it as well. So everyone had pretty high nerves going into it. Now, once it started flowing, it felt like we were having a real conversation. And as it should, the camera melted away. So that's the upside. Now, the downside is, for the first few minutes, I felt like there was a lot of PR rambling. There were a lot of really well-chosen words that didn't particularly mean a whole lot in reality, in the concrete world. And as I said at the end of the interview to the executives directly and frankly, after a little bit of hesitation there, uh, my feeling was that, honestly, it was like I could see the problem in front of me. And as expressed to them, it was it, it feels like this is a group of executives high up in the company who make policies that are well written and sound good, but there's a disconnect from perhaps reality where, and you see this with a lot of large companies, uh, either they're not close enough to the ground floor or they're too close to the politics and the money and the finance where they're not connecting anymore. And there's that loss of becoming out of touch with reality or out of touch 
with the customer and instead focusing on internal matters and on investor relations and on the stock market and all of this stuff, what moves the market. Uh, so that was perhaps part of the issue. I, I do feel like some of the team there might have started waking up to that. Um, now, another side of things is uh, Terry Cox, who seems like the right person for this particular situation, given he's in customer service. He's only been there for something like six months. Um, the director of PR has only been there one month. And, and that showed, not in an insulting way, but in a, he doesn't have a lot of company history here way. And so maybe that plays into it too. So during the interview, we were disappointed with how things were going initially. After the interview, it was very clear no one was quite sure how it went. Uh, we, the, the room kind of politely exited. Everyone asked each other how we thought it went. I mostly said, well, I think it went about as I expected. Um, and that was kind of the end of it. I asked Andrew later after we had left, uh, Andrew, you all wouldn't know this since he's uh, more behind the camera, but Andrew has really key and sharp insights at specific times that uh, some of the others of us, like I don't have at times on the team. And so I asked Andrew, how do you think it went? And being a person who only had to observe and his entire job was observing for this whole thing, Andrew sharply said, it felt like they were more worried about getting in more trouble or getting in trouble than they were about the customer. And when he said that, I agreed. Now here's where it gets better. So there's a positive here too. The positive is that Newegg did enact some immediate changes after the interview. So one of them was Newegg opened the account we requested, which it said it had already discussed, to be fair to it, but uh, hadn't done anything, obviously. Newegg opened an account specifically for returns, and that account is returns.issue at newegg.com, uh, where people who feel they have been wrongly rejected of an RMA may now try again, even if it's outside of the window. So that's awesome. Now, as great as that is, Perhaps part of the problem here for Newegg, just analyzing it in a way that's designed to hopefully help them and other companies, is that a, a room full of executives could not commit on camera in an instant to open a simple mailbox. That's not hard to do. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's only good for the customer. It does the right thing. And from the business's point of view, this will generate more money for the business if it does the right thing for the customer. That's normally how it works. There's obviously a line you draw, but they drew the line far too close to Newegg and not close enough to the people who pay it. So the fact that the email address, there couldn't be a commitment that simple in the interview, and I, maybe I should have pushed a little harder at this point when we were talking, um, to me is an indication of the greater problem, which is that the VP of customer service, the other VPs and directors uh, still feel like they need to have meetings over opening an email address, which says there are too many meetings happening and not enough action happening, but uh, it did get done, so that's great. The next thing Newegg did was it expanded its open box and RMA returns policy to include all items, not just motherboards and CPUs with bent pins, because you, frankly, you look at it and you're like, why, why just those two? What kind of cop out is that? It's like trying to, uh, again, it felt like trying to address Steve on YouTube and not address customers. It doesn't really matter the issue I had, it matters the overall issue. So they expanded that, that's good. Uh, and none of that really meant anything to us until we started getting some emails. We've gotten a couple emails from you all at this point where you've stated to us after emailing us about being wrongly denied an RMA or a refund previously, having now gotten it after Newegg went back through, reevaluated it and approved it. So hopefully this isn't just for show. We can't judge Newegg on what will happen in the next few months until that stuff happens. For now, all we can say is this. Newegg appears to be at least saying it's taking the right steps. That's not meant to sound cynical. It's to be fair to the situation, to respect the situation, which is that Newegg has to take repeat action continuously to earn back the respect or the trust rather of its customers. Now next, Newegg has been doing this a long time as far as we can tell, and we've had, as stated, hundreds of emails in just 36 hours when we opened that inbox without letting anyone know other than via text posts that it was open. We had hundreds of emails about people who've run into similar problems to us, and we vetted them, we asked for proof, it was attached, we have lots of chat logs, we have uh, order IDs, RMA tickets, photos of damage or missing items or whatever, and it's insane some of the stories that you all had. So 
if Newegg continues to do what it stated and goes back through this huge backlog of people who maybe deserve a refund and were wrongly rejected of one, effectively robbed our evaluation of this, obviously, then that's a step in the right direction. It just needs to not keep happening in the future. So that's some of the positive experiences, the good things that are coming out of this. But back on the negative side, there's one really consistent behavior here that's not a good behavior, which we saw all throughout up until perhaps just after the interview. Maybe you know, had a little more respect for us after we met in person. But uh, what we experienced, as Andrew pointed out very adeptly, is that Newegg, when we were a customer, it rejected the RMA. It received the motherboard back, evaluated it, claimed customer damage. We pushed back. Newegg allegedly reevaluated it allegedly took photos of the board that we never received and claimed customer damage. Newegg sent the board back and the money back after we publicly complained and said, uh, hey, by the way, we're from this little YouTube channel. We got it all back. We look at it, the RMA sticker is on there. It's very clear that this is uh, describable as nothing else other than either a massive f up or malicious. And here's where the behavior starts. Newegg saw an issue brought to public light. When it was private, when we tried to resolve it privately, we did not get resolution. Newegg attempts to resolve the issue privately after it's been brought to public with high profile person. Uh, Newegg then invites us to talk. Newegg then tries to stifle the option to use a camera and audio. But then once we brought to light that Newegg was originally going to accept the interview, it went back to allowing camera and audio. So those behaviors are all consistent with not really reacting until there's uh, a, a public push. That's potentially a bad thing. So, uh, and the same goes for UFD tech's issue, where UFD tech in his video talked about how he didn't get paid, and suddenly after publicly mentioning it, despite pushing internally for quite some time before that, he finally got paid for the advertisements Newegg ran with him. All of these things, are the same type of behavior. So hopefully, and also, by the way, so is the, the statement of hopefully you don't publish that email or whatever it was at the beginning of the, when we met them outside. So what we need to see is we need to see that go away, obviously. And we also need to see Newegg be consistent with its new policies and new actions and make sure customers are treated uh, in a fair way and not just treated as liars uh, and ripped off. So that's where it ends, really. We are very curious what you all think. This is long but we're trying to be as transparent as possible with the whole situation. So um, where we stand very condensed right now is overall, during the interview, we felt Newegg performed subpar, uh, met expectations, but those weren't high. And after the interview, we feel Newegg has taken very quick action. Um, now it's just a matter of, will it address enough people and get out to all the customers who need that help, who've been rejected in the past? Uh, and that's where we need you to come in and email us at egg at gamersnexus.net if you have new egg reach out to you or if you don't. Both are very important. And let us know what happens and we'll also be following up with new egg. So in a few months, in a year, new egg's not going to know. We have ways of getting in there and evaluating without new egg knowing it's us. So we will be continually evaluating and making sure it's improving and it's not all just for camera. At this time, we, we don't necessarily think it is just for camera, but we can't prove that it isn't because it's too soon. So hopefully that gives you a, uh, enough information to make a judgment on your own now and leave it to us and your peers who are buying from Newegg potentially to figure out if it's resolved. Thanks for watching. Thank you for supporting us during all of this. You can go to store.cameraaccess.net to help us out directly. Please tweet at us and at Newegg with your thoughts on the interview and subscribe for more like this. We have a lot of cool content coming up, including some really detailed testing. We'll see you all next time.